Philip, this comes as well, of course, as Israel's ground forces push further into Gaza. More casualties on both sides. There are still sort of few details, really, about exactly how that um, offensive is going. What picture um, have you been able to put together about how things are progressing on the ground? OK, well, 11,000 strikes so far since the beginning of this conflict. Uh, and 8,700 people are reported to have been killed, many of them children. So the, the death toll is uh, appallingly high. And that has stacked the pressure on Israel, of course, to uh, do humanitarian pauses. No sign of that happening right at the moment. Now, we don't know that much about uh, the ground offensive that Israel is planning or undertaking right now. But from what we can see that's happening on the ground, the first aim of the Israeli army, the IDF, uh, appears to be that they want to encircle Gaza City in the north of the Gaza Strip. Uh, that is where uh, the refugee camp that came under attack yesterday is situated. Now, that refugee camp uh, was attacked because the Israeli army feels and is sure that it was hiding Hamas fighters, not only in the camp, but underground in these this huge network of tunnels, which is uh, almost as big as the metro system, the underground system, subway system in New York City. So it's a vast task for the Israeli Defence Forces to try to not only attack on the ground, but underground as well, because they know that Hamas fighters are hiding there. So um, the, the main aim at the beginning appears to be wanting to circle the northern part of Gaza, up and a, a north of a, a line which is called uh, Wadi Gaza, which is a, a valley in the centre of the Gaza Strip. Now, we all know that the Israelis have been asking uh, the people of Gaza, uh, civilians, to move to the south of the Gaza Strip. Uh, what it appears to be at the moment is that Israel wants to take control of the roads around the northern Gaza Strip and then to take control of Gaza City while letting people move further south. What we don't know is what the second plan is going to be concerning the south of Gaza, because they've given basically pretty good notice to Hamas to move all its forces out of Gaza City to the south of the Gaza Strip. So if they do take over the north of Gaza, say within the next two to three to four weeks, what are they going to do next? Are they going to try to take over the southern part of Gaza? What would have been a better bet had they been able to do it to crush Hamas, which is what they want to do, is to overtake the whole of the Gaza Strip, which doesn't appear to be what they're planning to do at the moment. The complicated bit is going to be not taking part of northern Gaza, but taking part of southern Gaza, where you have not only Hamas fighters, you have tunnels, you have civilians, but you also have the hostages as well. And that is going to be a huge challenge for the Israeli forces to try to deal with all those different people at once and under pressure to stop all these bombing raids as well. So it's a very difficult task for Israel at the moment to try to work out exactly what they're going to do. And there are rumours that Israel is hoping there's going to be some kind of international action from the United States or from Qatar trying to broker some kind of deal for a new Gaza with the surrender of Hamas so that Israel is off the hook and doesn't got to go any further with all of this. But of course, if that doesn't work out, this is going to leave the Israelis with a huge challenge about how they're going to deal with the southern part of the Gaza Strip after they take control of the north. Talking of US and of pressure as well, one man who's under a lot of pressure is Joe Biden at the moment, uh, facing increasingly tough questions, really, over Israel's strikes on civilians, particularly amongst younger people there. Well, younger people are uh, deserting Joe Biden, not because he's an old man, he's over 80, but because many of them don't want the United States to keep supporting Israel. We've seen a fall to uh, just 25% of young people, according to a CBS News poll. Uh, that is down considerably uh, on the number of young who looked after him or supported him during the election uh, last time round. And also, uh, Arab Americans have been deserting Joe Biden as well in droves for his support of Israel. So all of that means means that Joe Biden is now facing uh, the polls uh, neck and neck uh, with Donald Trump. If you look at the, the latest opinion polls, uh, one from YouGov, The Economist, which is putting uh, both Donald Trump and Joe Biden on 42 percent if the election were held today. Of course, we've got one more year to go, but this is not good news uh, for Joe Biden. And this will probably be one of the discussion points when Anthony Blinken arrives uh, in uh, Jordan and Israel for a trip tomorrow. Philip, thanks very much. Philip Taylor, International Affairs Editor here on France 24.